Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Rover ST1 diesel. There's been uh, probably two or three weeks, maybe more, excuse me, between um, the NEC Classic Restoration Show and um, Midland Performance and Retro's hard work on the, bo on the uh, body. Um, I have on my right here a new whiteboard. I say new, it was off eBay or Facebook Marketplace, can't remember now, but it's blank and I'm going to populate that with jobs that need to be done. But rather than write stuff, I thought I'd actually do stuff. And what I'm going to do is start off cleaning the underside of the car, or at the very least getting ready to do that. So I've got it up in the air on axle stands quite high. Um, if you remember back to before I went to the body shop, I had been chatting a lot about um, the fact the body shop were going to do the outboard edges of the sills and stone chip them but they were going to leave the wheel arches and the underside of the floor because I kind of hadn't finished it so what I need to do is get the car nice and high in the air I've got it pretty high um, I might go a bit higher with some blocks at the front I need to get the exhaust off need to get this uh, chassis brace off and what I really would like to do if I can is get the selector off and then this piece of sound insulation get the gearbox mount off support the box here lower it and then try and get this whole insulation panel out from the underside of the car and then I can strip all of this back or the bits that need to be done and then um, seam seal properly and then put my special Jotun epoxy brush paint it all on so it's all solid and then go over the top with stone chip um, there are a few little welds like this that need to be finished off and then bits and pieces tidied up but in the main I mean obviously there's no rust it was all cut out it's just prep really before painting bits like this that are still really original I probably won't bother doing because I know that that's good it was just a few bits excuse me if you'll get travel sick I know some people bitch about that but things like this where I know that if I keep, continue to pick I'll probably find more surface rust so outboard of this chassis rail will be bare metalled all the way along up to the bulkhead as well both sides this area will probably remain as it is. I just want this out of the way because there are a couple of world repairs I did behind this side, which need um, preparing. And then up into the front, excuse me. Same goes, there's a couple of areas where it just needs finishing properly, but all looking rather lovely and considerably better than it used to. Um, I'm also thinking about removing this lower sump pan because we've obviously got some sort of oil leak. Uh, that one's fixing. The whole front subframe will come out at some point because I've got a new one. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go to get some grubby clothes now and start removing this old exhaust from the downpipe. Progress being made. The exhaust is off. I had to make one cut uh, where the rear silencer was, but that center section tube is all really good in the downpipe bit. Um, I don't need it because I've got a stainless one, but you know, for someone else who's got a diesel, that's a useful spare. I've uh, got the chassis brace out. It's not rusty, but it's obviously, again, suffered from forklift truck attack, which is what did for the most of the rest of the bottom of the car. I'm now going to start trying to get the prop bolts off. This shouldn't be too difficult because I had the prop off previously. And then um, we'll start looking at the selector. I remember why I was putting this job off for so long. Uh, righty ho, I shall update you. The prop shaft is off. The gear selector is off. The rear gearbox mount is off. And I've got the rear of the box supported on bricks and a little um, spare wheel jack thing. The panel itself is loose at the back 
and the sides and above the gearbox in the transmission tunnel. It's all just hanging there. But there's something at the front which won't let it come back. So th this is the, the panel itself. It has like an aluminium fabric cover on it, but the rest of it is like thick bitumen stuff on a card. I want to get all of this off so I can strip off all of this old aluminium and make something new to go on there or repair it in some way like with heat proof matting and then I'll rivet together and then slide it in but at the minute I can't work out how it's well you know what's holding it in there it must be something up at the front there which I can't see so I'm going to go top side and work from the engine bay um, some of these clips came off some of them bent out the way but we'll have to probably improvise some additional new ones when it goes back together. It's actually the next day. I gave up fighting with that under panel thing um, until today. Uh, it's about half four in the afternoon. The United Nottingham Forest game has just kicked off. So I thought I'd come down, listen to that and poke this. This is why I was battling. Although I could drop the gearbox, that's the rear end, that's where the selector goes through. Although I could drop the rear end, the actual shape of this, where it goes up under the transmission tunnel, meant that it was almost impossible to get out. I did end up damaging it a bit, but I don't like this thing. I'm not sure, I'm told that it's fiberglass, but I've got a worry that this might have asbestos in it. I don't know, it's just that sort of age of thing. But I was gonna lovingly restore it, um, and put it back into the car, but I'm not sure I'm gonna bother. Um, the reason being, I don't think that that actually does very much. It's not like a bitumen filled thing that's bonded to the pan. It's like these layers of compressed fiberglass and then a thin skin of what is basically aluminium tape. Paper with sort of some fiberglass reinforcement in it. You can just see the, the pattern there. Um, and then another layer of that on the underside. But it is really grubby, really horrible. And I don't really want to reuse it. So I might either try and make something that um, does a slightly sympathetic job or just delete that whole thing altogether and concentrate on insulating the inside of the car um, which I think will just be better anyway I don't know why Rover did this they did it on the two litres and the diesels so presumably it was for noise but quite frankly the transmission tunnel area could be done slightly differently um, it's going to be a pain to fit anything in there nicely but yeah this is why I'm under here this is the floor where I repaired it and I basically couldn't get to that to treat it from above um, because of that panel so all of this will have to be rubbed back to bare metal ground back all of these seams hammered shut, seam sealed, then epoxied, and then put back together again. This is one of the little things that holds that panel up. And I, I just hate the whole arrangement, these stupid brackets. So I'm gonna have a bit of a head scratch and think, but I, you know, my current plan is just to remove it and get rid and make something else on the inside to do the sound. Yeah, that's what I'm up to. Um, I might leave it there for today because I can't really be bothered to get super grubby. I need to protect my nice garage floor from all the dirt that's gonna drop off it. It's a miserable wet day again. So I've given up playing with sunroofs and things outside. And I don't have time today to do lots of really involved things. Um, but what I can do is get the welder out and weld up a few bits over here that never got done. So there's a few welds to finish. 
under there so they're welds that I drilled for plug welding and then never got around to doing because I ran out of gas so I will set up the welder I'll try and get it over that side and then I'll lie down here on my crawler board and hopefully snot those up but first off I'll go and get the wire brush and the drill and the spot weld drill and um, I'll drill through those old holes that I made so that the metal at the back that I go onto is nice and bright and the arc should set up on that rather than just filling in the hole. So I'll go get my kit and uh, get ready. Had the GoPro set up and it powered off through lack of battery again, even though it's a brand new battery and it's fully charged. God knows what's going on. That's incidentally the amount of diesel that got out of the tank so that can go in the van, which is good. Up here we have the plug world holes. Some of them are a bit of a mess. So I'm going to grab my trusty drill, clean these up just a little bit. See, I've done a few of them, but uh, to tack it together, those are horrible. I think that was again late at night in the car park. That one's really nice, but yes, so they need a bit more cleaning. I'm going to uh, put a plug weld drill in here, one of these flat tipped ones. Then I can drill through the hole, as I was explaining a minute ago, and get onto that metal at the back to get a good weld. So here we are. I've just gone over some of this with a wire brush, um, and now I'm just going to hit it with the fine tip or the flat tip of a spot weld drill bit. Because if I can clean up the metal at the back, as I think I might have just said, the spot weld goes straight through or the weld arc picks up on the panel behind and then fills in the gap. The danger is if that's rusty pine there and this metal on the front is nice, it'll just fill up the hole. It won't actually tie the two pieces together. So if I'm careful. See how now I've got a nice bright bit of metal there. The welder will want to weld onto that and I should have a nice weld and I'll do that on all of these. Uh, yeah. Then I'll go over it all again with the wire brush. Oh, I, don't. I think this uh, drill bit's a bit knackered. And I can hammer that seam together. Just tap it real tight and then zap, zap, zap. Should be good. There's one over there as well. I really could have done with getting the car a bit higher. But I didn't. And now I'm paying the price.
so that's all cleaned up so I can get the welder and do some welding. It's always quite difficult to get the welder set up for your first welds when you're doing something like this because you can't really practice you just have to hope that you get the right sort of penetration like heat or current and whatever else. <sighs> balance my iPhone somewhere sensible. Can I do that? you I've been doing so it's not my finest work by any means but it's in there and it's solid so that's all good now I will probably remove the fuel tank and I might start undoing the rear axle not gonna feel much more this has probably been quite a frustrating seasicky type video to watch apologies um, but next time my intention is to have a big ground sheet down and I'll actually start cleaning up the underside of this car close it up any final seams and then um, treating any rusty areas and then getting ready to paint on my Jotun epoxy and then we can seam seal stone chip reassemble well, I wasn't going to do any more, but then I kind of got carried away because I was underneath there. Fuel tank is out and outside, and I'm starting to remove the rear axle. The handbrake cable and brake lines were all I undid the other day. Might have been shown earlier in this video. It's a really simple rear axle. It was one of the criticisms of the SD1 when they launched them because it was a backward step compared to the Rover P6 with its Digion rear end but this is a live axle with a Watts linkage and then trading arms. And it's very easy to remove because you have four bolts, two each side for the trading arm to the inner seal. And that's that crucial bit that I had to repair. One bolt up there, which goes between the torque tube extension and that chassis uh, cross beam. So that's loosened. The Watts linkage undoes from the brackets here and here, just two 17 bolts. And then at the moment, the only thing holding it in is the rear dampers and that bolt which I've left hanging in the way. So I'm gonna undo the, the dampers from the top. <coughs> if I can get up, getting old. So yeah, just undo those, lower the jack down, undo that front bolt and wheel the axle out. Axle is detached, sitting on the floor. Um, annoyingly, I can't wheel it out from beneath the car because the dampers and springs are clashing with the inner wheel well. So I'm gonna to have to remove the dampers entirely. Either that or jack the car up, but I don't really wanna to have to do that. So yeah, I'll uh, get under there and undo those damper bolts. Hello to this bit of video. No idea where we are in terms of YouTube uploads. Cause I've recorded loads of stuff and never uploaded it. But today is a lovely sunny bank holiday weekend and I've got the axle on the floor now, I'll take the wheels off. That damper still refuses to come out so I'll have to remove it once the axle is outside and I can get some more access. I'm just going to remove the watts linkage off the back of the axle so I've cleaned up the nut with the wire wheel. I'll buzz that off and just mix one less thing in the way while I'm manhandling it out of the garage. Hopefully this will just come off, it should do. It's probably welded itself in there. <laughs> the bushes actually look really very good. So you've got one in there, one in the top, one in the bottom, and then these void bushes either end. And there are no splits in those as far as I can see. 
they actually look really good at both ends. So <laughs> this car had only done 40 odd thousand miles. And although the rubber is old, it hasn't been flexed a great deal. And being under the car, limited UV damage. So I'm not even sure if it's worth changing those bushes. I think they're all good. And the other nice thing is, you can see those bars are straight. Sometimes people who aren't careful, in fact, that one might have a slight tweak in it, but they jack on the back of the car and bend these, which is really stupid. Um, and these little reinforcer plates aren't rusty either. So that is a really good, what's linkage? So you shall keep that, give it a dusting of paint, and that should be good. Obviously the brake lines are a mess because I got them the right length but never fitted them because I knew I was going to repaint the axle. Um, I'll try and see if I can get the training arms off. They're both bent where somebody has jacked up on them. So that should be a nice straight beam but if you look at the forward end it's bent. Uh, so that obviously will mean that the tracking would have, would have been out because by pulling that up, they've pulled that front wheel forward, so it would have been rear axle pissing off that way, car trying to go that way, so not good. Uh, I will try and undo the spring mounts. I did lube them up last time, but whether they're going to come off, I'm not sure. They may just be a bit gammied up. Yeah, that's marginal we'll have a go anyway next video should be that outside and me looking happy just a quick side note just pulled that trailing arm out not only is it nice and straight but the what the plastic sleeve that goes through the bushes through the rear axle it's split but it is it's still there most of these cars that wiggling up and down contacts in there grinds that away and this basically can get ground down too so that's really nice to see the whole thing is there that's quite unusual still needs replacing but again it just shows that this car really had done low miles this is the other one and you can see the bend there it's very wrong so that one needs replacing or straightening uh, this is all still okay, got good bushes, good thread, and that bracket looks reusable, some surface crust, but it is made of 4mm, 5mm plate on this side, so chunky stuff. It's not exactly a big axle, but it's still heavy enough and cumbersome enough to be annoying, so I've got it outside. I've removed the um, handbrake cable and the brake lines because although they need re needed rerouting, they were actually in pretty good order. I um, don't know why I threw them there. I will, of course, pick them up, but I'm going to remove the torque tube extension, which is that bit, just four bolts here, and then um, that will just make the rest of the axle easier to pick up and carry. I still haven't got that damper off but it is an original Nivermat, Bogue Nivermat self-leveling unit, which is really cool. So it doesn't matter what weight you put in the back of the car, it'll always pump up or go back to the same ride height, which is really clever because it doesn't link to the other side of the car. It's just in that one unit. So super handy. You don't put loads of weight in the back of the car and have it dragging its bum. So we will have to... I mean, there's no leaks on it either. The other one's the same. They're different colours, so I think this is a unipart replacement, whereas the other one was original. But they're good to have, and if they're not leaking, they're generally okay. So I'll have to get that out carefully, paint it up, and then hopefully reinstate it, and we'll all be good. First two came out lovely, so I'm hoping these two will be the same. They get a lot of lubrication, that's for sure because you can see the amount of oil that's collected on the underside of the car. Part of that will be from the rear of the gearbox, because they always seem to leak. 
and the rest will probably be coming from here. The other reason I'm taking this off is if the pinion seal at the front has gone, it leaks into here and then dribbles out in this sort of general area. So give me a chance to inspect it and maybe change it if I want. In fact, I might do it just as preventative maintenance because this thing hasn't really done much rotating for a long time. I can also check the splines if I can get it apart one moment. It's absolutely honks of old gear oil. The splines look okay, but you can see that water as well as oil has been getting in here. That is mostly oil. So yeah, that's definitely oil, gear oil. So I will have to replace that seal there. I won't have to strip the diff to do it. Um, I do intend on taking the rear cover off to clean it all out. And I might also change the hub seals on the ends. I won't be doing the bearings and I will not be messing with the pinion bolt or pinion nut because that affects all the preload. So not today because I haven't got the new seals, but I will pull that old seal out, fit a new one, pull the hub seals out, fit new ones and clean all that up and put it back together. But for the moment, that is going to go in the field on some axle stands, ready for me to jet wash it and then wire brush it and de-rust it. But I'm getting sidetracked because the whole point of getting this out was to continue on the underside of the rear of the car. So less about axles, more about underside clean off now. Approximately one hour later, everything is now stripped off the underside of the rear of the car. So that's the rear cross beam that goes just where the seat pan is, up in there, between that point all the way along to this point. So that's out. Also removed all of the Watts linkage brackets off the rear of the boot floor, both sides. So that's this collection down here. All of these bits, none of it's rotten. They're all big pieces of metal. And really, they just want a rub down and a lick of, lick of paint. Another SD1 first for me. This is one of those weird things. It's a suspension geometry issue. So this whole beam carries the forward end of the axle. So the torque extension tube hangs in there. It sits on bushes and early cars, if I remember rightly, Series 1 cars, only have one washer between the top of this bush and the underside of the car. Very late cars, I thought, had three. So, in effect, it's spacing this whole rear beam and the nose of the axle down. This is an a reg 1983 1984 car and it has two so i've never had a car that just had two if i've ever had one or three so it's like they were trying to fine tune the up down angle of the nose of the axle and why they were doing that i don't know but i will reinstate it as it was but again this rear beam doesn't really go wrong can't really go wrong it's in a protected area if that's bent, your whole car is very bent. So that will just get rubbed down, painted, put back in again. But now for a tour of the rest of the underside of the car. Grab my little torchy thing. I've also removed the brake and fuel lines. So the whole of the underside of the car is now there. Sorry. So these are the back sides of bits that I repaired previously. The heel board. Then up in here, the floor pan for the driver's seat, the forward end of the transmission tunnel. So that'll all need rubbing down, epoxying, seam sealing, stone chipping, all the way through. And then if you excuse me, try not to be too trouble sick. Same again at the rear over there, the boot floor that'll get done. And then that's the bit that I finished welding last time. Little bit to treat and fix up in there. I do apologize for my 
CT camera work, but I'm still battling with GoPros. They still don't want to work. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. And then in the rear wheel wells, there was a couple of bits. So although this got epoxied, it wasn't seam sealed. So I'll finish that. And again, the rear side where all of that was rebuilt, that'll all get seam sealed and stone chipped to look like original. What am I going to do now? I'm going to go and get some plastic sheet, same as I've got over the BMW, lay that out on the floor, and then I can get down there with my uh, various cleaning tools and it'll be largely heat gun, scraper, wire wheels, stuff like that. And I won't film it because it's going to be dreadfully boring, but that's what I'll be doing.